questions, you may ask them and type in the chat box. So we will answer your questions during the Q&A session. Now, if you're watching via Facebook Live, kindly send your questions through the comment section of the video stream. Thank you so much and let's enjoy the knowledge sharing. But before we proceed in introducing our uh, lecturer, may we hear a few words from our esteemed department chair, Dr. Joylan Magbanua, for the welcome remarks. Good afternoon, everybody. Okay, I would like to greet each and every one listening via Zoom and via Facebook Live. I would like to welcome you for in our discussion about cervical cancer. Beware, be aware, and don't fear. So may we be able to impart knowledge to our common to our layman and as well as our colleagues. So let's enjoy the evening and let's listen to our esteemed speaker. So enjoy our lecture. Thank you very much, Dr. Magbanua, for the uh, welcome remarks. Today, as mentioned, we have a very, uh, we are very lucky to have Dr. Rhea Hurtado, a gynecologic oncologist, to discuss about our topic. Um, I've known her since uh, we were in training. She had her medical, uh, medical degree at UP College of Medicine and proceeded with her residency training as well as fellowship training at Philippine General Hospital. Her work ethics is just superb and her surgical techniques are likewise commendable. Uh, without further ado, let us all welcome Dr. Rhea Andrea Hurtado, our lecturer for tonight's webinar. Thank you. So again, good evening, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Cadiz, for the kind introduction. Tonight, my goal is to let you all know that cervical cancer is a preventable disease. And women having or getting cervical cancer can be, re can be reduced with exerted efforts on prevention and screening. So I'll begin my lecture or my topic with two cases or two stories of my two patients that I've seen. And I wanted to emphasize that cervical cancer can occur at any stage of a woman's life, especially those who have risk factors. So my first patient is a 33-year-old 30, single and works as a call center agent and has a one-year history of vaginal bleeding which she did not consult. And then two weeks prior to consult, she came in for dizziness. And upon assessment, there is noted cervical mass measuring seven as famous person non keratinizing For this patient, we are still recorded, married, and has five children in a housewife. Also with one year history of watery foul smelling discharge, but no consult done. She had six master of spot and one week history of profuse vaginal bleeding, which prompted consult. On assessment, there was already cervical mass measuring four by five cm and biopsy also revealed a squamous cell carcinoma keratinizing. However, for this patient, she was lost to follow up. And when she came back, she said she took herbal medicine. What is pertinent for these cases, even if there were already symptoms, they took a long time to seek consult and already consulted when they have the severe symptoms and when they are already experiencing vaginal bleeding. So for these two patients, um, when they went to my clinic, they, what the first thing that they would ask would be, Doc, ano bang cervical cancer or what is cervical cancer? So what is cervical cancer? So cervical cancer is cancer in the cervix uteri. It is a cancer in, uh, in the part of the uterus. That's where we call the, cer uh, the cervix. So that's where the cancer is. So ito ay cancer sa kwelyo ng matre. When I expound on this for my patients, uh, for them to understand fully, so I will just tell them the 
kung saan yung bahay bata, may kwelyo ang matres doon, doon nakakaroon ng cancer. So the pictures seen below are the, as you can see, this is from at the left most side of the picture is a normal looking cervix and then right beside it to the right is already a cervical cancer but at its early stage and then to the further most right is cervical cancer um progressing or in a higher stage so this kind of cancer this um, this friable mass actually this causes the vaginal bleeding and then after explaining what is cervical cancer, they would ask, how do, paano ko po nakuha to do? Paano po nakakaroon ng cervical cancer? So how do we get cervical cancer? So the main culprit would be your human papilloma virus. So your human papilloma virus is a virus that can be passed between people through skin to skin. It can be passed through sexual contact, it can be passed through formites. We have 100 HPV types, but there are only um, types of HPV or the high risk types that can cause the cancer. And the most, uh, and the common would be your HPV 16 and 18. So human papilloma virus is like a virus. It's like um, a flu virus. So when you get the disease or when you get this virus, it's actually, you actually, um, it sometimes it resolves or sometimes you clear off the virus, like the influenza. So what causes this virus to, have to develop into cervical cancer? So actually the persistence, the persistence of this virus in your cervix causes the development of cervical cancer. So what are your risk factors of developing or having this um, cervical cancer if the virus can be cleared off. So the four risk of getting cervical cancer, so these are your risk factors. So the main risk factor for getting cervical um, cancer is having the HPV exposure or having the HPV infection. And then you have multiple sexual partners. Um, you have early coitark or you start the um, sexual um, debut at an early age or you deliver it also at an early age. Um, those who smoke, those who have delivered more than um, three times, uh, prolonged use of OCP, and those who have no screening, or those who do not screen for cervical cancer. Actually, it's a risk factor. So I will be discussing on um, the natural history of cervical cancer. As I mentioned before, cervical can uh, the human papilloma virus, which is the main culprit for developing cervical cancer, actually clears off or resolves. So how does it persist or how does how does it progress into cervical cancer? So this slide only shows you that when you have a normal cervix and then you have an exposure to the HPV virus, which is if you have um, multiple sexual partners, early sexual debut, high parity. When you get the human papilloma virus, and then when this virus persists, and it persists because you have the high risk HPV infection, or you got the the high risk type of HPV, which is the HPV 16 and 18 that causes the cancer, you have a weak immune response, you have other STDs, or you are genetically, or your genes are prone, uh, are programmed to develop cancer. And then after being infected with an HPV, um, as it persists, you develop the pre-malignant lesions, which is the low-grade squamous lesions and the high-grade squamous lesions. As you can see in this slide, it will take time for these um, pre-malignant lesions to develop before progressing to cervical cancer. So actually, that's why cervical cancer is preventable. There's a lot of um, intervention that we can do during the progression or during the in persistent infection 
of the high-risk HPV into developing into cancer. So what are the common symptoms of cervical cancer? So you have, as I mentioned with my two patients, the foul smelling, watery discharge, or any abnormal discharge. You have your spotting, intermittent spotting, post spotting. You have vaginal bleeding and low back pain. Cervical cancer is the second most common cancer in women living in low and middle income countries. So in the Philippines, Every year, there's an estimated 7,277 new cases, and almost half of these new cases die in a year due to cervical cancer. So around two women dies of cervical cancer every minute. If cervical cancer is the second most common cancer, the, 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 the first or the most common cancer would be your breast cancer. What's um, very, with breast cancer, what I wanted to share was that it, for breast cancer, kasi we can do manual breast examination. It's easy for the girls or for the women to do manual breast examination. So that's already a part of screening. But then for cervical cancer, you need to see a center or a clinic to have your cervix be assessed. So that's maybe one of the um, barrier why the, there is um, uh, there is little uh, or there's actually uh, women don't do screening for cervical cancer. So WHO, um, DOH, and also um, NGOs have this goal by 2030. 2030s so as a part of um, cervical cancer elimination by 2030. And this is their three, strateg uh, three strategic pillars. So we have our prevention through vaccination, which is HPV vaccination offers long-term protection against cervical cancer. And their goal is that 90% of girls fully vaccinated with HPV vaccine by age 15 years, by age before 15 years old. And then the second one will be screening and treatment of precancerous lesions to prevent precancer from developing into cancer. And their goal by 2030 is that 70% of women are screened with a high performance test. High performance test meaning I'll discuss it later. It's HPV DNA testing by 35 years of age again and by 45 years of age. So in a women's lifetime, you should screen, she should have received screening for cervical cancer two times. And then timely treatment and palliative care for invasive cervical cancer. So um, which can save lives and palliative care can really reduce pain and suffering. So 90% of women identified with cervical disease should receive treatment and 90% of women with precancer should be treated and 90% of women with invasive cancer should be managed. So that's our goal for the elimination of cervical cancer. So I'll go to the prevention. So primary prevention. So I listed um, four primary invent, uh, primary prevention. So the number one would be total abstinence, which prevents HPV infection. Lifetime mutual monogamy prevents HPV infection. And then consistent and correct use of viral protection decreases cervical cancer incidence. And then vaccinations ag against HPV 16 and 18 is efficacious against persistent HPV infection and a precancerous lesion of CIN2 or your high grade or low grade famous intraepithelial lesion. What I'd like to point out is the fourth, um, the fourth one, the vaccination against HPV 16 and 18. So HPV vaccination can prevent 90% of HPV cancer. And through studies, HPV vaccination has decreased the HPV, cancer, HPV infection 
causing HPV cancers among teens by 71%. And the two doses is effective as three, as three doses if given before the 15th birthday. So what are your type of HPV vaccine? So your HPV vaccines can be given at an age as early as nine up to 26 years. Why only up to 26 years? Because um, the study only um, have shown that at, at 20, if given 26 years, the, the efficacy of the vaccine is up to 90%. So for the cervix, uh, it's given to girls 9 to 26 years of age, which is your HPV type 16 and 18, which is the highest type of cancer, which, um, which can cause cancer, is given at three doses. However, I think Cervarix now is not yet, is not available. And then we have your Gardasil and your Gardasil 9, which has recently um, introduced um, HPV vaccine. So your Gardasil, would include your HPV 16 and 18, which is our high risk type of uh, um, human papilloma virus. And it also include the 6 and 11, which is the low risk type, which only cause the genital warts. And then for the Gardasil 9, it's 9 because it targets nine types of HPV. So it targets seven of the um, HPV types that can cause cancer. Aside from the 16 and 18, it includes five more HPV types that which we see now that in the Philippines, there are HPV types of 45, 33 that can cause cervical cancer. And then it also included is the lowest type or the type 6 or 11. So these are given at 9 to 26 years old. So if given before the Gardasil and the Gardasil 9, if, if given before 15 years old, you can only give two doses. So for the secondary prevention, regular screening through pap smear. So if we did not catch the primary, primary prevention or we did not receive the vaccination, we go to the secondary prevention. So that's regular screening through pap smear. So pap smear is actually getting um, a sample of cells in your cervix. And the pap smear, when under the microscope, can detect abnormal cells in your cervix that can diagnose if you have precancerous lesions such as low-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion or your high-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion, which you can be treated for this, which in the end can prevent progression to cervical cancer. So this is your secondary prevention, your regular screening through pap smear. So for WHO, the age to start screening is, our, as, is at 30, um, years old. However, uh, the ASCCP or the American guidelines that, that the Philippines, uh, that we, the society follows, we start screening at 25 years old if there is already a sexual debut. The next would be your visual inspection with acetic acid. Some centers or some clinics don't have or doesn't have the capability of doing pap smear because you need a microscope, you need a pathologist to check the cells. So um, DOH and some NGO um, have, tr uh, have um, trained um, midwives, nurses to man the centers, the health centers or small clinics to do visual inspection with acetic acid. So what we do here is that a vinegar or suka, your common household vinegar suka. And then um, when you, you use a speculum, and then when you see the cervix, you put suka or you put vinegar for around 60 seconds or for one minute for the suka to take effect. And then after that, after removing the 
the cotton ledger that's, that has hookah. If there's an abnormality, you will see a white um, a white lesion. It means that there's an abnormal um, uh, abnormal protein uh, proteins that are occurring there. So that's that's why you have um, whitish coagulation. So that's abnormal. And then if the center or the clinic is trained to to do treatment with VIA. They can actually give the cryotherapy or the treatment for that, and then after that, if it's treated, and then they reassess again after a few months. If not, if the center is not capable of giving the treatment, they can actually refer to a hospital or a center where they can do or when they can assess more. They can do colposcopy or a more um, extended visualization of the cervix to assess the abnormality that they saw during the visual inspection with acetic acid. And then we'll go to the HPV DNA testing. This is actually the first choice or the first choice screening method to screen cervical cancer. However, for our country, it's not yet available. It's um, it they, it's it's a special machine or a special um, a PCR machine to detect the um, HPV DNA. So only a few lab. Sometimes it's also not available in big hospitals the HPV DNA testing, we have to send it out to a laboratory. But the collection is the same as the pap smear. You just get a sample of the cells in the pap smear and then you subject it to a PCR. So what's um, the advantage of this HPV DNA testing is that we can actually tell if you have the HPV, what HPV um, infection you have. If for, if, for example, when you do the HPV DNA testing, we get um, results that you, have, you are positive for the high risk type 16, 18, 33, or 42, then we can actually um, advise the patient or the patient to, to get treatment. It depends because there's a triaging also for HPV DNA testing or to seek consult to a specialist. So, and, and the patient is aware that she is infected with a high risk type of, um, type of HPV or the human papilloma virus that can cause cervical cancer. So with this, uh, the primary prevention, the secondary prevention, the HPV vaccination, the screening that I have told you can actually prevent um, cervical cancer. So cervical cancer is the disease that can be prevented through HPV vaccination and regular screening. Or ang cervical cancer ay sakit na maaring maiwasan sa pamamagitan ng HPV, vac HPV vaccine at regular na screening. I think this is my last slide and the message that I want to impart, impart to you is that get it formed, get screened, and get vaccinated. Thank you very much everyone for listening. Thank you very much Dr. Ada Hurtado for that informative lecture. It's short, it's sweet, and it's very malaman so to speak. Um, you we're able to cover the basics, but there are some questions posed by some of our listeners. Um, first, is there a certain cutoff in terms of length of OCP use, which poses a greater risk in developing cervical cancer? Um, there's actually no um, certain length, but what in the studies, more than 10 years use of OCP is actually a risk factor in developing developing cervical cancer. The hormonal um, th the reason for this is because the hormones can actually modulate the HPV infection. 
to um incorporate or to to develop to 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 let it develop into cervical cancer okay so yeah doctor i have another question but before we go to that question let me just flash this because apparently we have the cancer screening package so it's just an advertisement yes. in the middle of the q a so um, we have uh, the cancer screening package wherein pap smear is already included, CA125, you know, for other cancers for such as ovarian new growth. Yes. Um, whole abdominal ultrasound and breast ultrasound. So this is available in Qualimed Santa Rosa for only 6,170 pesos. And I think that's already a bargain in order to get checked and see if there's any problem. Um, Moving forward, we have other questions. Okay. Um, first, uh, secondly, second question na pala to, How do you explain uh, patients who get cervical cancer without any sexual intercourse? Because you mentioned earlier that HPV is one, is the risk factor, the major risk factor in developing cervical cancer. But there are stories wherein patient, some patients would get cervical cancer and then there was no history of coitus. Yes. Um, actually, marami akong patients na ganyan. They would come to me, Dok, wala naman akong, wala, wala akong coitus, wala akong, wala akong sexual contact, so paano ko siya nakuha? There's uh, things such as um, skin to skin contact. One might. So, when I ask them, especially um patients who are lgbtq so sila yun eh. and then they would i would ask ilan ba naging partners po and then they would say um five to six but no sexual contact but you know through formite through exchange of by, by just doing skin to skin contact prolonged skin to skin contact you can actually transmit the virus so no need for actually the act or the sexual contact. So you just, if there's a skin, prolonged skin contact, the virus can be transmitted. Are skin to skin contact, you mean to say even holding hands? Or, uh, well, of course, it's in the organ. So definitely yes. not necessarily penetrative using any mm -hmm. instrument or... Not necessarily or penetrative, but the skin contact of the genital area or around that area can actually transmit the virus even with using the hands with the other skin I think that's a good to, not good to know but I think that's an information that should be shared to uh, many people because uh, may, many would have that notion that once you have cervical cancer it's because you've been with a um, polygamous partner or the patient's been polygamous herself, right? But there's this certain type of stigma. So apparently you can have it even without actual sexual contact, but skin-to-skin yes. -skin contact, such as fomites, no? can transmit um, HPV. Okay, I have another question, Dr. Ra. How about... Um, cervical cancer vaccination you mentioned that a while ago um are you aware of any programs by uh, in the philippines wherein giving hpv vaccination is encouraged in younger population because you mentioned and i like to emphasize that uh, in your lecture um it can be given to patients as young as uh, right. younger than 15 years old right and they get um yeah. two doses only compared to adults na three doses mm -hmm. so is yes. there any program by the government or program that you know of that encourages vaccination hpv vaccination um actually the from before for the hpv vaccination for girls however this was discontinued and was not supported Because sorry, doctor, I'm just choppy, lang po. Can, there are many uh, issues, especially yes, it's better now. Sorry, and better. Okay. 
Um, there was some misunderstanding that uh, or oh, parang the sexual um the consciousness of the teenagers or the the younger um, population would be uh, with the yeah, HPV um, vaccination. Okay, sorry, I didn't catch the last a uh, few words that you yeah, mentioned. I'm not sure if it's my connection or ah, uh, so. I think we have connection. Sorry, I'll just repeat it. So, may misunderstanding between the schools and um, the giving of the HPV vaccination. The na stop she, because may misunderstanding na parang the sexual consciousness or yung parang mas na aware with the uh, sexual sex sexual ano yung mga bata is parang na na associate siya with HPV vaccination parang mas parang pinoprod pa natin sila parang yun yung dumating eh parang pinoprod natin sila mag karon na mag uh, mag mag engage to sexuality man lang mas, mas maaga but what the HP vaccination actually wants um, is kasi when we grow old when we you don't you can't control kasi the environment you can't control their children you can't control um, who are they gonna marry? What are they gonna do when they grow up? But giving them the vaccine, the HPV vaccination, actually protects them from this very dreadful disease. As I've said, I've seen younger patients now, that in on 50, 40, but now I see 24, 25, 26 uh, years old having cervical cancer. And what's sad for these patients are they are. Because they're young, they're supposed to clear off the virus. As I've said, it can be cleared off. But then, why did they? Because bata nga sila, bata hindi nila na clear off yung virus. Maybe the type of cervical cancer they have are the higher or the most um most aggressive type. So that's why they it was immune system. So actually, sila yung mas mahirap gamutin. Sila yung nagtutumor progression. Sila yung Hindi nag -re respond with um, the treatment, the radiation. So it's very sad. So now that um, may ish may vaccination naman, sana we can give uh, the vaccination to our um, girls, our teens, to prevent cervical cancer. Thank you very much, Dr. Hurtado, for that. Actually, it's a good thing to emphasize if there are pediatricians here listening or if we have um, parents yes. who are who have listened to your lecture, I think it's good to promote HPV vaccination because as you've mentioned, Dr. Arda, we cannot really prevent um, we cannot really control their actions, you know, our, our kids' actions. But then again, um, the least that uh, a parent could do is to protect um, the daughter or the son, okay? Yes. So it's not just for women, by the way. Diba, Dr. Rata, ba? Oh, yes. That is a boy. Yes. Mm -mm. It's, for, it's for females yeah. and males. So Male. it's not just the, um, the girls would be given vaccination. So everyone is encouraged to have um, HPV vaccination. Um, we have another question, Dr. Rata. Um, is it okay to have multiple doses of the vaccine? So example, if a patient had already received um, Cervarix, let's say 10 years ago, and now she wants to get uh, Gardasil 9, would that be okay? Um, Mulan, I think it would be okay to receive the vaccine, but yun nga, the studies for Gardasil for the if for parang the high um, efficacy of this um, vaccine is at 9 to 26 years old. But there's nothing wrong or there's nothing harm if you get the vaccination, the Gardasil 9. Okay, so for those who've been given Cervarix before or Gardasil, the quadrivalent vaccine before, they yes, can still they get can, the Gardasil 9. 
So, yes. Uh, can you give us a ballpark um, amount? How much is Gardasil 9? Uh, or, I think it's the best one available right now. Yes, no? the Gardasil 9. Because it has the seven um, seven types of HPV. That, that yun, kasi it's 16 and 18 lang. But when we, with the advent of the HPV DNA testing, we see now 42 to 33. So it's actually good to get the HPV 9. I don't know. Um, the it's around I think um around eight thousand to ten thousand. I'm not sure. Kung any SRP. But it's, it's it's quite difficult to source. There was a time I think in twenty twenty that it was out of stock. Twenty nineteen twenty twenty. I found it difficult to get um stocks of Gardasil nine. Sige. Um, we have another question, Doctora. Um. Once you've been, once a patient is, or once a person has been given the three doses of HPV vaccine, vaccine, is there is is there still a need to give the fourth dose, a fourth dose or a booster dose? No, the recommendation is only for three doses. Now. So if you got that three doses, it's okay. Okay. With the proper timing, yeah. So zero to and six months. Okay, so we have a feedback here. Some a range of Cardasil nine, um, in some pharmacies around eight to nine thousand yeah, per dose or per shot uh, around that range. Um, since uh, cervical cancer is mostly associated with uh, STI, do you think it is prudent to have the partner uh, checked as well for HPV DNA? Yes. Pwede, pero it's more efficient or it's more um what parang mas if paano ba natin efficient kung yung babae yung mag HPV mas effective mas effective or... yes yes cost effective hmm. if it's the female but we you can you can screen males for the HPV DNA testing yeah lang kasi as I've told you HPV DNA test eh, HPV is can resolve eh. so pwedeng Meron siya this time and after ilang months wala na yung virus. Kasi if you can clear off the virus, eh. yun nga yung problem with the, the female, the women. We have the tendency to retain the virus and the persistence of it can cause not cervical cancer. So I think better yet have the partner vaccinated with HPV vaccine na lang, no? To be protected. Well, Wait, ideally, yes. <laughs> I, so they could bring. So, do you have instances Sexual where? Sexual debut. Yeah, that's. Yeah. <laughs> uh, was there any instance in your practice that the that your patient brings her partner for vaccination? Um, di na, because usually when I see them, they're already. Ayaw, I'm sorry, they're already. They they're already, already have cervical. <laughs> What mm. I see, kawari, um, I have patients like cervical cancer. What I see are the yung mga anak nila they bring for the vaccination. So they get chempre traumatized with the cervical cancer. The yung mommy nila may cervical cancer. So ang nakukuha ko sa clinic is their daughters yung pinapa vaccine nila. So yung nga, it's sad kasi nga, um, they only get the vaccine when um pag alam na nila yung sakit but the hpv vac um, yun nga din kasi ang problem with hpv vaccination it's hindi siya ganun ka uh, accessible kasi nga mahal pero when, when you look at it um of getting the cervical cancer mas mahal yun mas mahal yung treatment and then you have the cancer so might as well get the vaccine agree this can be prevented Yes. Sorry, did we just go back to what you said about the program about giving guard the seal? Because I've had uh -huh. I've had uh, patients because yung anak nila, they were given um, guard the seal, but it was stopped. The program was stopped because well, of the, the program the, was stopped. Uh, and the and yung other, yung the, the yeah, and they're thinking that it might promote promiscuity or yes. mapusok <laughs> na activities, but um, that's just sad. So, but if they have the opportunity, prevention is better before any contact. Yeah. Um, sige. 
Uh, another question. Up to what age can we give the HPV vaccine? Suppose, Dr. Rad, um, the patient already started sexual activities. Um, say a patient in her 30s. Do you still advise giving HPV vaccine? Because in theory, it should be given before Four, any... Yes. So how about the patient in her 30s or, or 40s? She's just afraid that she might get cervical cancer because she's uh, she heard that a relative of hers got cervical cancer. What would you advise? You can still get the vaccine. It does not uh, actually only prevent the cervical. You, ha you have also the ano, eh, the prevention of the genital wart. So yun pa, isa pa yun. And of course, um, we cannot... Uh, the efficacy of the vaccine is not as good as if you were given before the, the sexual debut, but I think it can still help, although there's no study regarding that. We have a vaccine already with um, sexual, or already in the late 30s with sexual activity. Um, so, yeah, but you can still get the vaccine because. And then you also have to get screened, of course. So, so vaccination and screening. So regular screening actually also prevents um, cervical cancer because early detection of the precancerous lesion is actually good before actually going to um, if it before it progresses to cancer. So mahaba eh, mahaba ang ang develop ng cervical cancer. So that's why now we're getting um, the cervical cancer usually falls at the 40, 40s, 50s, kasi mahaba in time na develop ng cervical cancer. It takes 10 years, 10 to 15 years. So actually regular screening do help. Um, there's... Oh, sorry, yes, go ahead. Ah, uh, yes. Um, with regards to HPV DNA testing, there's actually an ongoing program with um, uh, DOH, um, NGPICO. That's the success program. But it's just starting in different hospitals. So ito, uh, it's, it's being introduced, the HPV DNA testing is being introduced as a screening for um, cervical cancer. So Yon, hopefully, um, marami kasi siyang center. So, uh, alam ko meron sa Batanga, sa San Pedro, sa NCR, and marami pang tinitrain uh, sa centers. Um, hopefully, you can join the, the study or that program. Kasi um, it's a free HPV DNA testing. The HPV DNA testing, if you would like to get that test, it's around 6,000 tests. So, medyo mahal. And that and that program is free. And the and what's good with the HPV DNA testing, you can collect your own specimen. So you don't have to go to a clinic or to a center to, to just um to get the test. You can actually do the test on your own. The they just um the center or the program only uh, teaches you how to collect the specimen. So you maganda with HPV DNA testing. You can do your collection on your own and hopefully sana ma promote your HPV DNA testing in the Philippines. I mean, the, the patient, it's not similar to doing pap smear on it's your own? It's the same, but you can't do pap smear on your own because kasi, kasi, you have to get the speculum, <laughs> was, do that. Uh, quite testing. interesting how but HPV, the HPV DNA, DNA, DNA testing, you can you can there's a swab you can insert the swab in your mm -hmm. vagina but there's um tinuturuan tinuturuan namin how to self collect so parang papasok may swab when you feel a uh parang it stops there then you do the the collection you do the rotation of the swab clockwise uh, rotation for 10 and then that's it you get the the the, the sample to be sent for hpv and a testing Okay. That's good because so you can test the HPV 16. Okay, okay, go ahead. I know, sorry, it's just an add-on question uh, related to the previous question that was asked. Um, so meaning to say, you mentioned that the um, the time before a person 
actually has that obvious cervical cancer lesion, it might be 10 years, 15 years. So the, yeah. the latent time is actually quite long. Um, mm -hmm. Now, there's a question here. Can you still, is it still prudent? Uh, can you, is it still practical to give the vaccine, let's say, if a patient is already 50 years old or 55 years if old? The, I, as I've mentioned, there's no, um, hindi na nakasama kasi up to at 26 years old lang yung sinasabing efficacy ng virus. So kung 50, I would, um, I think the most practical would be just to get screened. So you do your screening, your pap smear, and your, or your HPV DNA testing. Rather than getting the vaccine, baka hindi na kasi siya um they're not effective for that age okay um how about screen because you mentioned screening how about the recommendation the actual recommendation because if we are let's say looking at other guidelines from other countries there are um there are statements they're saying that you could have it done once every three years and in the Philippines, we advise that the patient should have their pap smear once a year or annually. Um, can you comment on that? Yes. Um, actually, WHO and the uh, ibang guidelines would recommend um, getting your pap smear or even your PIA every three years. But for the Philippines, since we have the high burden of the disease, we actually screen our patients every year kasi nga mataas yung burden ng disease natin eh. So to actually get um, the patient early. So yun yung, yun yung um, recommendation is to get a pap smear every three years for three years. I don't think kung na meron pang nilabas na guidelines na nag like to change nito pero but that's what i still know and then yun, every three years if we have the hpv dna testing the screening would be actually much less um every five years so mas mahaba unless ah uh, pero iba pa may may triaging pa rin pala yung hpv dna testing but if it's negative you can get the test after five years Okay. How um the Jipago Jipago tababa did I pronounce Jipago, it correctly? Yes. Jipago, sorry. Um has that program. If someone is interested, how do they get in touch with uh that's with anyone regarding that program? Um it's just starting kasi what I know and next to start pa lang ng screening is at San Pedro. So, malapit siya sa Santa Rosa, San Pedro, the Evangelista Medical Center. Yung pa lang alam kung nag, um, doing the success for the scale of cervical cancer secondary prevention strategy. So, yun yung HPV DNA. You can actually go to Evangelista and inquire about the success program. Wait, okay. So, Hopefully, if we get more details, let's say it's more if it's more um, prevalent in other hospitals or institutions, you could give us uh, a heads up so that yes. those who might be interested um, can avail of that uh, very very useful useful test. Um, regarding screening, the uh, the usual advice is to start at the, if if I remember correctly, twenty one years of age and above. And for those with sexual contact, so for those without any sexual contact, let's say she's already 35 years old, is it warranted to do pap smear? Because there are instances where in a patient would have cervical cancer even without sexual contact. Yes, um, the, uh, the advice would be to start um, screening. Actually, yung, uh, the 21 is being changed now into 25 years old. So. If I then actually start and screening. So um if you have sexual earlier, you can start already screening. But if voila, you can actually start screening at 25 or at 30 years old. So if there is no sexual you can actually start even with, screening. Even without sexual contact of our uh, yeah, I would advise screening at least 
two times yun na, you can start at 30 years old and then if and then if it's negative then you can um, um follow up after five years if you have the HPV DNA or if you have the pap smear or the cytology every three years mm, I see for the audience if you have any question you may type it in the chat box we still have some time um Meanwhile, I'm still scrambling for other questions that I'd be asking you, Dr. Ra. So suppose they have um, they have suspicious cervix. Where can they have the cryotherapy that you mentioned? You said in some institutions. Um, is it readily um, available? Or can they do um yes. can they be done instead? Yes, there are many, there are centers already that have the cryotherapy. So may mga centers nga na trained for uh for cryotherapy but I am not aware of sinong centers. Pero the hospitals, the big hospitals have cryotherapy especially if they have a gynae also um, specialist there or there's there's a cancer center in that hospital. There's cryotherapy. It's part of the uh, treatment. So yun. Okay. There's a question here. Is there pre genetic predisposition in having cervical cancer? Can you say that um, a patient who had a relative with cervical cancer may also have a likelihood of getting one? Um, actually, based sa, sa mga studies before, um, parang hindi mo, not more of genetic yung cervical cancer. But then, um, as we, uh, as it has been, um, ongo there's an ongoing studies, kanyan, they are seeing more na parang may genetic. Or actually, ang tawag nila nila is parang the genes, your genes have the uh, predilection in developing any type of cancer. So parang ganon siya na if your environment, your genes um, have the tendency to uh, parang na magkaroon ka ng cancer, parang ganon. But cervical cancer uh, that is hereditary, hereditary is very rare. Um, I haven't heard of na merong ganon. So, Okay. There's a question in the chat box, Doctor. I'm just asking about how much is HPV DNA testing. So the HPV DNA testing in laboratories is around six thousand, five thousand to six thousand. I'm not so sure the price, but seven thousand. Six thousand yung pwede mo magas. Pero yun na could be seven or eight. It's a high performance test, nga. So parang you, can, you know that you have this um, infection, then you're more aware that you have to watch out, you have to get screened, you have to go to, to prevent uh, progression to cervical cancer if you have the high risk type of HPV. And actually, you can get treated for that. Let's say if you have HPV 16, the new guideline says if you have an HPV 16, um with HPV DNA testing, pwede ka na kagad mag-treatment with cryotherapy or thermal ablation to prevent the progression of this uh, I see. Even without cancer. actual lesion? As long yes. as the patient... Oh, that's interesting to know. DNA, so, yes, you can actually get treatment. Okay. So sometimes it's not, um, it's not readily... I mean, any problem is not seen in the conventional pap smear. The mm -hmm. conventional pap smear has low yield sometimes. Yes. So I guess mm -hmm. getting that HPV DNA would be beneficial if a patient deems herself a um, high risk. Now, yes. with regards to screening, when do you stop? When do you advise a patient to stop doing screening? So the guidelines now is that if you are, if you have screened, if you have already screened for, uh, for quite a three times and it's negative, um, you can stop at 50 years old. Yun yung new guidelines. But yun nga, sa Philippines, parang up to 
60 or 65 years old, we still get screened. Actually, the ASCCP guidance, which is what we follow in the Philippines, is actually you have you still have to get screened at 65 years old. Because we have to have a lot patients around 70 years old or 80 years old still develop cervical cancer. So up to 65, you still have to get screened. If you did, if you have not have a screen before, ha? so you can still get screened at 65 years old. I see. So do I understand it correctly? If 65 years old, you can still screen the patient. Mm -hmm. But if the patient has had three consecutive negative uh, BAP mm -hmm. smear result yes. at the age of 50? Ready ka na mag yes. uh, you, you upper. Even with the burden of cervical cancer we have in the Philippines, it's yeah, quite scary. It's quite uh, scary nga kasi. Yun nga yung laging um, um, debate with regards kung sinong susunding guidelines sa U.S. or sa, kasi we have really a high burden of disease. So, actually, what we follow is the uh, ASCCP guidelines, yun, um, which is 65. Pero, if you, yun nga, if, kunwari, before 65 years old, if you have already screened yourself in more than three times, and you are already at 65, and it's still negative, then you can stop screening. Okay. Um, we have a question here. Um, what are the prerequisites or what preparations should be done before getting the HPV DNA testing? Um, actually, wala naman except if you have menstruation. Um, if, sorry, or, sorry, sorry, if you have what? Menstruation. Ah, how about sexual contact? Uh, because we advise our patients not to have sexual contact. Pag no, it's okay smear okay usually. It's okay. Ah, okay. So, so no problem. Sa bagay, they're just, it's already a PCR type of testing, mm -hmm. so they'll be able to get the specific segment needed for the DNA na HPV. Okay. Um, we have no more questions in the chat box, but uh, do you have any other points or statements you'd like to emphasize, Dr. Hortado? So I think that's the, everything that we discussed. So yun nga, my take-home message is um, get screened and get vaccinated. So cervical cancer is a very preventable disease. And if you get, and if we do, if you do have, if you did get cervical cancer, the early diagnosis is um, because it's really early, but it's very treatable. Okay, thank you so much for that, Dr. Hortado. Um, we now proceed with the closing remarks uh, from our medical director, Dr. Lilibeth Maravilla. Dr. Maravilla. Hi, good evening. Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Department of OBGYN, for that very interesting lecture. Uh, very informative, uh, indeed, because we have not uh, thought of promoting these types of vaccine. Uh, especially for the young, for the young population, and of course the screening uh, at a very young age. Well, literature says twenty-one, but Doctor Hortada says it's twenty-five now, and uh, periodic screening. Siguro we have to strengthen then our um, promotion on these types of diseases, because these diseases are very much preventable, and uh, these are the few types of cancer that are not uh, significantly linked to genetic uh, makeup of an individual. So this is from an infection. So really very much preventable. Of course, uh, be being clean, having safe sex, and uh, uh, having no risk factors that were mentioned were the best, uh, are, are the best factors to, uh, to maintain for primary prevention. But apart from that, very important is uh, having your uh, children vaccinated at a very young age. So thank you very much for the very informative uh, lecture tonight. And I want to thank uh, Dr. Hurtado for that uh, very comprehensive lecture. And of course, Dr. Rani Cadiz for moderating uh, the session well. So uh, a lot of informations were generated on the question and answer 
uh, session. So very, uh, very informative. So thank you very much, uh, Dr. Hurtado and Dr. Hadis for uh, handling our um, OB, uh, GYN. Uh, this is a part of our ancillary series, both for our uh, lay uh, population and also for the non, of course, for the non OBGYN doctors, because these are welcome informations for, uh, for all of us. But thank you very much. Back to you, Rani. Thank you very much, Dr. Lamanavilia, for that. And now we proceed to, um, to flashing the certificate. Thank you very much, Dr. Cadiz and Dr. Hurtado. Qualimed Hospital Santa Rosa presents the certificate of appreciation to Dr. Mary Rani M. Cadiz for her expertise and valuable role as moderator during the webinar entitled Cervical Cancer, Be Aware, Don't Fear, given this 18th day of May, 2022, via Zoom virtual event. Signed by Attorney Nirmala Barbara S. Vanguardia, Chief Operating Officer, Alimed Santa Rosa Hospital, and Dr. Lilibet Maravilla, Medical Director of Qualimed Hospital Santa Rosa. Qualimed Hospital Santa Rosa presents a certificate of appreciation to Dr. Rea Andrea H. Hurtado for her expertise and valuable role as speaker during the webinar entitled Cervical Cancer Be Aware, Don't Fear. Given this 18th day of May 2022 via Zoom virtual event, signed by Attorney Nirmala Barbara S. Vanguardia, Chief Operating Officer of Polymed Hospital Santa Rosa, and Dr. Lilibeth Maravilla, Medical Director of Polymed Hospital Santa Rosa. Okay, for better dissemination of information discussed in this lecture, a video recording of this webinar will be also posted in all official QualiMed Health Network Facebook groups and pages, and will also be uploaded in our YouTube channel. So if you'd like to review some of the pointers discussed by Dr. Hortato, please visit qhn.tv. Again, um, thank you everyone for participating and joining us in tonight's webinar. That wraps, wraps up our webinar for tonight. Um, good night to all. <laughs>